when we're meditating, we're giving the mind a place where it can settle down and look around and not be hungry for things. Because okay? when you're hungry, you get all sorts of distorted perceptions. Things that are not food start looking like food. And as a result, you mistreat things around you, and you end up not really getting any nourishment out of things. As the Buddha said, the mind has three different kinds of food. There's the food of intentions, there's the food of consciousness, and there's the food of contact. And a lot of times we just go in terms of whatever intention comes up. You ride with that and you feed on that. Good, bad, and different, it does seem to matter. As long as you're hungry, you'll take whatever you can get. The same with sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. You have contact at the sentence and senses, and you just go right after these things because you're hungry. You don't really get to look and see, okay, what's really good food here and what's poison? Because a lot of things in the world look good, but they're not good for you. They sound good, but they're not good for you. So you have to be in a position where you're not hungry. That's why we feed the mind off of the sense of well-being. You breathe in, breathe out in a way that nourishes the nerves in the body, bathes the muscles all the way down through the torso, down through your legs, down through your arms, and a good energy. When you've got that good energy running inside, then the mind has a sense of being in a place where it's well nourished, and it's not so greedy for things outside as it was before. And because it's not so hungry, you can look out. So, okay, what out there really is food, and what's not food? And among the various kinds of food, what's the kind of food that's good to eat, and what's the kind of food that's going to be bad for you in the long term? You can think about these things a lot more carefully. It's like society. Not that society is wealthy; people can be very picky about what they eat. But in times of famine, you'll eat anything. So you want to be very careful to put your mind in a possession of wealth where it can be very picky about what it eats. And that's what we're doing as we meditate.